Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting outside of the UK. If it's the first time you're passing through, I'm a black woman born in the United Kingdom. My parents are from Jamaica. Um, I spent 13 years in the United States of America working for the government and I'm now, for the last, well, let's say the last maybe 15, 20 years, I've been living back in the UK. Um, so that's a little bit about me and if it's the first time you're passing through you're welcome to subscribe like and share i talk about issues that affect america because i do have still have an affinity there i talk about issues that affect jamaicans because obviously i have an affinity there because it's my heritage and i also talk about issues that affect my indigenous UKans and people in the UK because my affinity lies there as well. So um, yeah, so that's why I cover those three main areas and issues that are affecting those areas. And today I wanted to talk about um, the new UK NHS visa. Um, supposed to be fast-tracked, um, nurses can get it in 14 days apparently um, they only have to pay half of the immigration fee it's normally 962 they're getting it for 468 they can pay that they still have to pay for their health care but they can pay that out of their salary that's 400 pounds a year per person but they can pay that out of their salary now um, Boris Johnson is talking about you know we need about 31,000 I think to add to the 11,000 we've got that's 31,000 immigrants how do you feel about that how do you feel about a man who's telling you that he's going to reduce immigration on the one hand and now he is using a device to recruit immigrants from abroad under this fast track visa just saying so that is the situation as it is i've written down a few notes um pretty patel has launched the new nhs visa which will be announced post brexit um they had this um let me continue before i go off track Nurses and doctors, um, they want them to fill up all the job shortages. I'm not quite sure what kind of contracts they're going to receive, though, because you have to remember that these people are coming from their home countries. They're coming here with expectations, the same way that the Windrush people came over with expectation when they was invited to work in the UK. It's a similar situation. Calling people ab from abroad to fill in um, a hole, an employment hole in the UK. It's exactly the same thing. And what happened with the Windrushians is that they came to the UK after they were asked to come and do certain jobs. And of course, they got married here, they had children here, and for them, if they had children abroad, they brought them home, they brought them over here. Now, these 31,000 nurses that they're thinking about um, doing this fast track visa for, they're going to have the same expectations. They don't expect to come over here on their Todd and work for the NHS for goodness knows how many years. And they have a family back where they came from unless they're told up front. I think the government should tell them up front that this is for single people only. It's a short term contract for single people only so you can get some experience. You can fill the hole that we have here. It, we might need you for six months. We might need you for a year. We might need you for three years, but we cannot guarantee you employment. We cannot guarantee you um, accommodation and we cannot uh, accommodate your family. They should tell them up front. Oh, no, they don't do that, do they? And then they blame it on the individuals when they bring their family over or when they try to bring their family over and they then have that privilege of rejecting their applications. Oh, anyway, um, what else did I want to say? Um, 
it is going to be harder for the EU people coming in post-Brexit because um, they'll now have to come in under the Australian style visa if they haven't got settled status. Um, I believe that the 31,000 that they're trying to recruit have to undergo this Australian point system as well. So they make sure they get la creme de la creme. Um, what else? I don't know. Sometimes, you know, sometimes my, my mind, I just think sometimes, are they trying to stir the pot? Are they trying to create animosity or what? The Tories. I mean, you know, the, especially when you've just got in, and now apparently they've got nearly fifty percent um, diversity on on in the cabinet in the Conservative cabinet. And lots of BMEs and what have you. A lot of diversity. So, are we? Um, have we misunderstood Boris? Is this a tactical move? Is this a, to make us feel as though there's a security blanket, like with the NHS? You know, the the fact that all these plans are taking place and these fast track um, visas gives us a sense. Well, they're doing all of that. That means the NHS is okay. We don't have to worry about the NHS because look, they're recruiting all these nurses. And look, Boris has got all these um, that, this diversity on his team. That looks good, doesn't it? Just saying. Just saying. So, the visa. Oh, he's also, well, we, we know he's investing 34 billion in the NHS. Okay, um, there is some... Um, rumours, I don't know whether you call it rumours, but some people say the NHS is safe, but the healthcare is not. I'm not quite sure. The NHS is not on the table, but the healthcare is. By healthcare, I'm not quite sure how they break that down, whether it's just the prescriptions. I really don't know. So Boris might be telling the truth. NHS is not on the table, but we, a lot of people understand healthcare to be, is synonymous with NHS. So I'm not quite sure how they separate that. But anyway, what I'm telling you peeps, don't get too comfortable. You know what they say, um, anytime there's peace and safety, sudden destruction. <laughs> it ain't even funny. Um, anyway, um, so the visa will need to either let the applicants know that they're not allowed, that there's no expectation to bring their family members over. Uh, there was one junior doctor endured a 10 month fight to bring her daughter over after she responded to a drive to recruit junior doctors in the health service in 2016. Two, two visa applications for her daughter were rejected, but then she was successful with the third application. I'm not quite sure what changed. And that's what I mean. I'm not quite sure under what um, criteria you're allowed to bring family members over. You know, maybe she got a five year extension or on her visa, on her job or something. I don't know. But that has to be set out up front. Otherwise, you're going to have people coming over here, like the Windrush generation, who saw this as their home. We, we were led to believe, our parents were led to believe this was our home. It was the Commonwealth. We were British. We were all British subjects. We were one family. We were meant, that's how it was introduced. And so the expectation from my generation who have gone, is that they could have a family here. They didn't expect a few years later they'd be starting to be calling illegal immigrants, undocumented residents. They didn't expect that for their future generations. Because at that time, when they came, they thought we were all one. Things change, I know, but that's not their fault and they should not have been penalised for it.
The same way that they need to set straight up front what they expect, what they can give, what they can provide. Yes, it's, it's easy to attract them over by reducing the visa fee and by saying you can pay the 400 out of your salary. That's the least of their problems. Most of them probably have jobs and just see the UK as an opportunity. And with that, they have certain expectations. So that needs to be made clear up front. Not a couple of years down the line when they're settled, they've got their little home and they want to bring their family over and then to be told, oh no, that wasn't a part of the bargain. So they need to come clean and let these people know up front. That's all I'm saying. Um, what else would I want to say? Um, yes, like I said, they also need to know whether it's a fixed term contract, permanent contract. Well, it wouldn't be a permanent contract. I think with fixed term contracts, you can have about three or four of them and then they can become permanent. And I think that is where it goes wrong. Because once they become permanent, that's more or less telling that individual that you are permanent staff member and you can stay in this job. And on that provisor, you can then um, apply for your family and goodness knows what. So like I said, if you're trying to limit immigration, you need to, um, okay, we need doctors and we need nurses. Of course we do. I was at the, um, I was at the hospital with a friend over the weekend who had a serious back problem. Heart could hardly walk. And um, I suggested that we go in an ambulance, but it didn't feel as though it was an ambulance situation. So I went down to the A&E after waiting, I think, two hours. A lot, they read out this long list and said, oh, everybody must go to the urgent GP. Why didn't they tell us that before? Oh, no, they made us wait two hours. So went to the urgent GP, sitting down there. Well, there was no seat. So they said only people who are patients are allowed to stay. So I left and I went home and I got a call. OK, we got there about 1230. I got a call about four to say he had to go back into the hospital to the A&E. So he was now recognised as being an emergency. Took 12, one, two, three, four, four hours. He needed to be transported in a wheelchair. That's how bad it was. Then goes back to the A&E, puts him on a, on a bed and um, starts, um, then he has to have an extra. Well, what I'm trying to say is all of that in, in accident and emergency from 12.30 didn't get out of there till nine o'clock in the evening. I was fortunate. I had a little reprieve. I went off home, made some soup and just as well, because he would have been sitting in that place without nothing to eat for all that period of time. What about other people who uh, have somebody who is who doesn't want to leave them? Yes, you can use the hospital restaurant, but, you know, even for a small bottle of Lucasade, it's bloody nearly two quid. So you can imagine how much their little restaurant, how much things cost in the restaurant. So when you're in there all that time, let not to mention the price of the parking. But why I'm saying that is all of this contributes. And all I'm thinking is that, OK, if you are going to bring these extra nurses and doctors in, you have to be up front and let them know what they're letting them in for. And is it going to reduce those waiting time in A and E? I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I think a and &E, I mean, that is how it should be, to be honest. a and &E should really be for those people who are really, really, you know, nearly half gone. But it's full of people with coughs and colds and, you know, people who can't see GPs. That's what it's come to. See people walking up and down and you think, what the hell are they doing in a and &E? Because they can walk up and down. So I understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. But the same token, it does mean that those who have genuine um, problems or accidents or pain or whatever it is, emergencies, 
are, are, are filtered out with the rest. They're not filtered out with the rest. They just have to go through the same process until they determine, oh, yes, you are a legitimate emergency. I've gone off track there a bit. Um, so what else did I say? The UK wants an individual to fill the job, not the whole family. And like I said, this should be made clear on application. The contract would need to be fixed term with the proviso that there is no expectation of an, of an extension and let people make up their own minds. They still might want to come for the experience. Um, family members should not be able to join them, but they should be able to come and see them on short vacations. It's a bit like some interracial relationships, you know, this NHS thing or this health practitioner um, job recruitment. They you know, they're asking people to come and fulfil these jobs, but they only want the individual. They don't want the extended family. And sometimes you find it inter interracial relationships, especially white women with black women. I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes a white woman loves the black man, but they don't want the whole family. They don't love the whole family. There's some situations like that. I've actually witnessed it. Like I said, it's not all of them, but this is what it reminds me of. When the um, government only wants one person to fill a job and forgetting that they actually are a part of a family, but they don't want them. Anyway, um, so there's 96,348 vacancies in the health service. Um, and I'm telling you something, you think it's easy to get in the NHS. It's not easy. Even a band two, which is one of the lowest grades. You can't, you know, as admin, as admin staff, you still need high literacy, high level of literacy. You need to have coordination skills. You need organisational skills. You need audio skills. You need secretarial skills, PA, flexibility. You need excellent computer skills, telephone manner, data entry, record keeping skills. That is for the basic entry to get into the NHS. You'd be surprised what people at the low level are capable of doing. I mean, the, the, um, the skills are so high. The level of competence is really high. So it's not no dibby dibby people and it's not any and anybody can fulfill these roles. That's what I'm getting at. Not any John Joe can come off the street and think, OK, I'm going to apply for an administrator. And um, it's a band two. It's only paying, I think band two is probably pay about 16, 17,000 a year. I don't know. Um, so therefore, it's going to be very easy. It's just going to be putting data into it. Oh, no, you'd be very mistaken if you thought that. So they're not easy jobs to fill. That's what I'm trying to say. They're specialist jobs. They take technique and a high level of expertise um, expertise in a lot of areas. And unless you are high, you're not going to get in. So, yeah, that's I was only saying that because there's 96,348 vacancies, which is a hell of a lot. And I know they're probably um, doctors and nurses, but you have to remember there's support staff that need to bolster and um, support the doctors and the nurses and the health service. Um, visa rules would also apply to the 66,000 EU nationals, that is 5% of the total workforce, and who work for the health service in England. 9.4%, sorry, let me read that again because that doesn't make sense. Visa rules would also apply to the 66 EU nationals, that is 5% of the total, who work for the health service in England. 9.4% of them are doctors and 6.4% are nurses who won't need a visa now if they have settled status. If they don't have settled status, they have to join um, this same process, the Australian style um, point system to get to work in the NHS, which will be much more difficult. And so, yeah, I think that is all for now. I don't think I have... Oh, yeah, um, I did want to say this bit. Um, so why they're hoping that the new visa will help resolve issues. The Conservative Party have 
been responsible for all the budgets and policies adversely affecting the health service. Tories have been promising more healthcare practitioners for decades. Apparently, at some point, they promised 50 million more GP appointments. Now we can't even get an appointment. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if I don't go into my GP and get down there about 7.30, I'll be waiting there until they open at 8.30 and the queue will be so long, I still won't get an appointment. That's how bad it is. Uh, in 2015, 5,000 more GPs were promised by, two, by 2020. And as of now, 1,608 fewer full-time GPs are working than in 2015. It takes 10 years to train to be a GP, so where will they come from? Are they already qualified? Um, are they sitting around waiting for the UK to request their services? I think I said that um, Boris Johnson intends to pay each nurse £1,000 um, for training. That's a part of their £34 billion investment. And um, one of the GPs says apparently two in three EU doctors plan on leaving the health service and one in two GPs plan to retire within the next five years. So, I don't know. I'm just sharing. That's all for now. Bye.